today and uh, it's Monday morning, so it's the start of a new week. How are you, Asha? I'm really well, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, time is just rolling. Oh my honours, getting to the end of November, the countdown's on. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, good. Hard to believe that, yeah, we're, we're at another Monday already. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And isn't it true about the countdown and the last night I went, oh, wait a minute, like we're just about to get into December and I haven't even um, worked out my my next year's meetings and events and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, I've got to get my butt into gear. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I'll do next year's calendar and it just hasn't happened yet. And here we are near the end of November. Mm, yes. So that's going on, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, it's funny that you say that. I turn my attention to that just yesterday with some um, with some tentative dates of booking things in for next year and yeah like it's yeah it's we're just at that that point it's hard to believe yeah yeah absolutely mm. um yeah so so it's just you and i today we've we've uh, lucky what well, that's one of the beauties of having three of us on is nicolette is unable to attend today so you know it's not just me you know, going, oh, well, I'm going to make something <laughs> as I go along. But um, it's really beautiful that we can still have a conversation, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, it's it's really nice to get the, the varying perspectives. Um, yeah, and it's either way we get to dance, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm sure even, you know, we both know Nicolette very well. So I'm sure she'll jump on perhaps next week and contribute to this as well. But um, I don't know, we, we might even be channeling some of Nicolette's essence as well and, and bringing some of her wisdom in um, yeah. irrespective. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And good morning, Helen. Helen's just jumped on and said hello. If you're watching live, we would love for you to, um, to say hi and um, let us know that you're here. So... Today we're actually talking about um, the structures that we're um, born into. Um, this is this is a really big topic, actually, mm. and it's not something that uh, many people like. I know the work that I do is all around structure, and so. Um, now I look at the different structures that I'm that I'm in and um, I can identify them easier. But before that, I don't think I would have even considered what a structure was in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so I'd love for you to give us a, um, your perception of, you know, structures and, and um, you know, what, what even structure means to you. Cause I know from my own, learnings you know like what i've been um doing with the work that i'm doing we've got a specific terminology around right. that right um yeah but what, okay what your thoughts on structure yeah sure so i guess where my mind goes probably and and this is kind of just the way my mind naturally works but i will always go to the most abstract and then um come into to a more kind of focused um Area. So for me, when I hear the structures that we're born into, um, my mind literally goes from the universal structures and the natural laws that are always at play and then um, into the world structures and um, the structures across the, you know, time, you know, um, in terms of culture, um, eras, um, the the structure that we've been in since um yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, so kind of COVID structure, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. So, so from that point on, and um, that influence on society, and then I think about Western structure, and then coming into um, Australian structure, and and politics, and governing forces, and then I think about at a more, um, you know, I guess relative or relevant for most people, um, family structure and really how, how that family structure shapes us without us even knowing. Mm. So one of the things that I really 
work through people and it's actually um you know i'm i'm really big on understanding the person where from the medical model they're really big on understanding the presentation yeah. and the presentation is only ever the latest manifestation of the environment that the, yeah the and and that person's yeah all the structure yeah. yeah so until you actually understand the person and how they're um being influenced by those structures they are going to find that they are bound and you'll get these presentations um come up you know mainly anxiety and depression that kind of thing so so where i actually begin is going tell me about your family and getting them to not just say, well, who's who in the zoo, but give me their descriptive factors. Mm. So in terms of what are their most dominant traits, good, good and bad, because when you are able to see those dominant traits play out in that structure, because we will be influenced by that and then also need our own degree of separateness in terms of who we are, so there'll be, there'll be the overlap of shared ethos, culture, how we move from um, pain to reward, and then my separate part of the circle to go, this is how I am unique. So so for me, that's where it becomes really relevant and where you're able to mm, elucidate people's own sense of self. And then they get their choice back because now suddenly, well, does this serve me? And is this truly in line with who I am and how I want to live? Or have I just been moving through this dynamic based on these structure from family through to society? And does that serve me or not? So, uh, you know, the way I think about structures is what's at play now that I can see what's at play, does that serve me or not? And what changes do I want to make from a values or soul perspective of this feels in alignment for me moving forward? Mm, yeah, absolutely. And that comes with awareness, right? And mm. um, to, a couple of things that I that come to me as you say that um, is the uh, one of the first things is let's go to the basics of what structure is. You know, a, a structure is something that contains you, right? Like it's mm. like if you've got um, a, a river, the river bank is the structure mm. that that river's in. Mm. You know, like this, mm. this is a structure at the moment. I've got a cup of dandelion tea um, in a cup with my hands and now it's all a structure. As soon as I let go of that cup, I'm no longer part of that structure anymore, but it's still mm. containing mm. the dandelion mm. tea, right? Mm. So there's there's a structure is something that, that is a container and uh, a way of being that mm, mm. In, you know like that's a good way of putting it a way of yep. being and um and awareness like just as you were talking i'm like i felt like that's why i really really believe in having a coach a mentor a therapist uh, someone in your life if you want to really um be the best version of yourself in your life, your relationships and your business or, or work or whatever it is, having someone that can look outside of your blinkers mm. um, and be able to perceive more of what's happening um, because there's so many different structures, as you said. You know, some mm. of the structures like the, you know, the universal structures like all the earth structure, like mm. gravity, right, that's yeah. a structure. Yeah. We can't change that. Right? Yeah. You know, and yet there's other structures that um, that we can we can go. Oh, this is this is a cultural structure that I got caught up in. Mm. I'm a woman. I need to serve and I need to be subservient. Ah, oh, you know, you can see when structures get get awakened when mm. you know, like a, on a historical level. Ah, oh, females recognized that they were in in a structure that they wanted to break and so feminism feminism came in burning the bra came in you know all of a sudden that structure is completely broken down and and something has to be rebuilt in its mm. place you know like what yes. is what is yes. it we're going to move into instead um and and when you come down all the way down into as you were saying the personal 
Mm. Like recognizing some of the structures, you know, you were saying, what is your family like? Because mm. you as an individual, really you don't know who you are until you can understand what are the what's that family structure that you've been built into, mm. Mm. conditioned into. Yes. Like we've been conditioned into this is the way the COVID structure is. Yes. We've yes. been conditioned to believe that this is the way it is. And it's the same with, with you know, um, a family structure. This is the way it is. This is the way we think. This is the way we mm. behave. Mm. Um, and so we're conditioned into that. So truly to know who you are, you don't know that until you can break down or be aware of it, break mm. it down if, if it's not right for you, it doesn't mm. serve you anymore. Some of the structures, like, really do serve you. And then recognize, okay, so what is it, what structure I'm going to put in place instead? Mm, what mm. am I going to move into? Or if I'm breaking that structure down, what is going to birth out of me because now mm. I'm going to have that ability yeah. to identify who I truly am as an individual rather than as a member of that family or that culture or that worldview or collective consciousness or whatever it mm. might be. Mm, exactly absolutely and and I think um this is where the utmost compassion is needed because if we become aware of how we have been influenced and positioned um the kind of the automatic response that often goes with that is oh it's everyone else's fault as to why I am the way that I am but the truth is, is that people only ever can engage in the world as they know it. Yeah. So, so when we look at our predecessors, they were only ever working with the consciousness available to them at the time, you know, and, and when you're able to look at that with compassion and go, well, I am the way that I am because of that. And now I have the gift of insight and an awareness and I can just simply suspend and hold space for them because they are also the product of all these structures. People just simply don't know what they don't know and mm. that is okay. Mm. So I can be compassionate with others, compassionate with myself whilst I engage in this new because when you suspend structures and go, okay, well, and even just entertain the question, is this working for me? And the truth is it will be working to you to some degree. One, because you've survived, right? So so all of these structures yeah. are, have gotten you to this point, it, right? They've kept you safe, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. So there will be a, a big part of your nervous system that wants to cling to these structures because it's known. And at, at a nervous system level, it's kept you alive. It might have always kept you happy, but it's kept you alive. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's actually about being really um, kind and compassionate and recognizing that this journey into the unknown takes a tremendous amount of courage. But once the <laughs> subconscious mind recognizes that there's an alternative, those alternatives start revealing themselves to you. And then what often happens is that people in the old structure um, you turn towards them and go, well, what's wrong with you lot? You're like, why aren't you recognising that there's an alternate way? But people can only come into contact with these things um, as time allows. And the people that we're closest to, like we've spoken before, um, can be some of the most mm, <laughs> resistant to change. So then how do we turn these lights on for ourselves? find the compassion and courage to move forward and the generous allowance to have things be as they are and people be on their own journey and decide for themselves what structures are working for them and what aren't. So these, these are really big, um, not only concepts, but skills in going, thank you, Helen, um, in going, Okay, I can now in being bigger in having this awareness because that is what awareness is. It's my sphere of understanding myself, others, the world and the self within the world has gone from this to this. Yeah. And that is, um, that's, that's a big soul journey for people. And yeah. just because your world has gone from this to this 
doesn't mean that we can expect others will do the same. So it's about allowing that difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, so many things that I um, that I want to cover in what you just said because um, the the whole like you know the the previous generations were doing the best that they could with the information that they had, right? Mm. And then put on top of that epigenetics, right? And mm-hmm. the fact that we are, um, you know, our all of those things that like blocks, triggers, um, emotions, thoughts, beliefs, feelings, all of those things can be epigenetically, if that's mm-hmm. a word, um, um, you know, charged into our dna as well and you know like it mm-hmm. says in the bible i'm sure in other biblical texts as well that you know the sins of the father will will come back and haunt the you know the the previous mm. or whatever well that's scientifically proven now with heavy genetics right that mm. you can get these charges so and here we are um in this beautiful time and space where if you're watching this, you're one of those people that is, it feels like we're just being seeded, you know, like drop down. There's, there's a, you know, um, a group of, of um, light workers or um, people that are, that are waking up to mm. the opportunity to transmute, transform and, mm. you know, um, awaken new pathways within mm. our um, mm. experiences and and clear this stuff it's not it's not anybody's fault it's just the way it's been Mm. on a human evolutionary process Mm. there is no you know well you know um it's my grandmother or is my mother or whatever because we you know if you if you're watching on any of the platforms you you sure you understand that we chose to come into this family it's our choice right we came here we chose to be here we've got to make that you know um take that self-responsibility and go ah and i can change that and shift it and so um uh what you said about compassion i actually uh there was someone in my facebook friends that actually wrote something yesterday about um uh, having compassion for people that don't understand the choices that I make, not trying to shove it down their face that you know that they need to make the same choices or that why I'm mm. why I'm making those choices, right? Just having compassion um, for people to un- you know that that this is this is my choice and I totally understand if you don't understand it, you know, like mm. Um, mm. and so um, compassion comes in in all forms when we're on a spiritual journey right understanding that we're doing this alone and together yes 100 percent, 100 percent. that's such a beautiful way to put it Mm. um yeah and and admittedly when you know when i went through my awakening um there there is you know you're on your own hero's journey that no one can take the steps for you. No one can um, can reveal to you what is needed. That's that's your bravery to um, continue to open up. Yes, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <Absolutely>. yeah. <laughs> and for no one else but yourself. Yeah, yeah. No one else but yourself. No one's living in your skin, breathing your air seeing through your eyes no Mm. one's gonna pat you on the back and say wow you did a work i mean people do right but but Mm. does it really matter like honestly you know if if you're living in your experience you want to have the best version of that possible right Mm. Mm. so that's why you go through the hero's journey and Mm. we've all got our own hero's journey exactly to to go through haven't we yeah yeah exactly and and what you know i in terms of the epigenetics and, you know, activating all these things or um, mm, commencing, it's often often there's a catalyst. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I've spoken to anyone 
um, that has decided to engage more of themselves without the catalyst, which is quite often a significant pain point, Mm -hmm. you know, because people will only leap from what is known into the unknown if it becomes more painful to stay with what's known yeah. you know right. so when yeah so when we get frustrated with others in going come on like we you know we've taken the leap you know there's some really beautiful stuff and um don't you know back here like the world's this big and the world's actually this big and this big yeah um that at that point in time of their life, if they aren't taking the leap for themselves, their known is still tolerable for them. Yes. And it's that simple. And, and such a good point. And, and that's why we've got no right to try and shove anything down anybody else's throat. Because yeah. if, if you're trying to shove something down somebody else's throat when they're not ready for it, Mm-hmm. Your ego is in the way. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. personally, mm-hmm. and this is me be, making a big statement, but you personally haven't come to peace with what you're doing already. Because when you're at peace with it yourself, you don't need anyone else to justify yeah. it or verify it for yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think you know if if we take on that philosophy um of we have like you say we chose to come down here and live this life and be surrounded by these people then there's already a soul journey that's been mapped out for everyone you know that i will be this teacher for you and you will be this teacher for me and it's actually those um friction points that that are our greatest learning Mm. so and that's when we get to turn some of this structure stuff into a gift right Mm. because it's only when um we you know we house a philosophy big enough to absorb it all and go ah there's the value and that's why that's why we're coming into contact with this so i can learn to have inner peace with my own and recognize that everyone is on their own soul journey that's been perfectly mapped out for them that we're able to suspend our um, human need of in order for me to survive, I need to be accepted by you and it re- be reflected back to me that I am like you because mm. that's that's what that's about. It's about am, am I accepted at, um, at the deepest level because what we're talking about is, like you said earlier, a mode of being, a way of being, a belief structure that gives us peace and serenity within this life. Mm. You know, and and then with the intended purpose of contributing, contributing in a in an expansive way, um, you know, and and that takes tremendous inner work and suspending all structures and the evolutionary need to say I am like you and you are like me, mm. because it's only when you start bridging out of that that you can become more of who you really are. Yeah. But then that provides the gateway for others to do the same at their own pace, in their own readiness, with loads of generous allowing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, just to, to, um, just as a way of bringing in some, some ideas to, for anyone that's listening, that might be like, well, how do you, how do you recognize those structures that you're in, right? It's, look at the patterns that you find yourself in you know like how do you behave around your family compared to how you behave at you know around your friends you know like and what is it that you like about the way you um you're perceived or the way you behave and what is it that you don't like doing um that's a structure you know like how do you manage your finances you know, how do you mar- um, you um, manage your household? How do you manage, you know, look at all the different themes or the different parts of your life and go, well, you know, how, what's my habitual habit and how do I, um, how do I respond in different situations? And um, I personally just recently 
found a structure that I was like, oh, wow, I didn't recognize I was in that structure. And um, going from, it, it was a financial one, going from not having any money, at, you know, single mom, doing it tough with the kids, you know, um, living from, from, you know, having a couple of massage therapy, you know, uh, clients here and there, um, you know, trying my best to get off the, the um, payments, the Centrelink payments or whatever. And then I would go to the shops terrified of looking to see if I had enough money to buy food, right? Mm -hmm. And so here I am now, you know, totally different situation, kids gone, me by myself running two businesses, six figures, blah, blah, blah. And, and the other day, um, or I've done it a couple of times just recently because I've moved house and blah, blah, blah. I went, oh, I'm not looking at how much money is in my bank account and I haven't been looking at what my in incomings are and my outgoings are at the moment. And it doesn't have that same fear factor, but it was mm. still like a unconscious pattern mm. from a structure that I didn't even recognise I'd still was con yeah. contained in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh wow now that I recognize it I'm going to be able to break that and every month I'm now going to look at what's my incomings what's my outgoings mm. what do I need to shift what can I increase what you mm. know like and actually um be more financially intelligent with all of that you know yes. um but but it was when I recce I'm like oh there's a structure that I wasn't even aware it was an unconscious one from yes. way back yes yeah yeah really interesting yeah, that's that's a beautiful point. Um, and yeah, I think I think those concrete examples are are so helpful in going ah uh, because so many people would relate to exactly what you just said in going. Hang on, but it's it's those moments where the penny drops, and and I think as like an overarching way to kind of determine what what am I influenced by is what are the areas of my life that I'm avoiding? <laughs> yeah. because, because if you are avoiding it, it means that there's stuff there that um, is yet to be unlocked and, and uncovered and set free from. Yeah. Um, and finance is a beautiful example for so yeah. many. And, and look, I agree. I can definitely afford to um, be a little more um, conscientious. You know, so I think, you know, and um, yeah, so so what what is the area of your life that you're avoiding? And then how do you and who do you choose to engage with to bring that level of, of consciousness and, and conscientiousness to that to make sure it's working for you? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and that we're not just moving through something because it's laying dormant. Yeah. So many different parts that can be subtle, subtly fearful mm. of, you know, like, mm. yeah. Um, I've got someone, someone's just written something a bit. Let's see what this has said. I watched your structure video on Saturday, Liz. I found it hard to actually name right what structures I have going on. Absolutely. It can be, um, it, I don't know who that is, um, but thank you for jumping in. Um, it can be, that's why I find... Um, that, you know, getting some sort of support, help, mentoring, coaching to see the blind, you know, the blinders. Mm. And sometimes, you know, the big structures can be relatively, oh, hey, Renee, lovely to have you on here. Um, some of the bigger structures are more obvious. And so, um, and, and Renee, you're in Conscious Creator, right? So often... You can be clearing the, the structures before you even need to know what they are because of the way the work works. But um, as you start clearing some of that stuff, the awareness becomes a bit bigger, you know, like mm -hmm. and you can recognise a structure is such a big thing to actually mm -hmm. look at, you know, like it's mm -hmm. not until you start recognising that it is something to even be aware of mm -hmm. that that's when you know the the um the aha moments so you know looking at structure in itself can be a very in-depth 
um, process. Mm, mm. Absolutely. Mm, so absolutely. So we've gone over. Look at that, just the two of us, and we we still. <laughs> But it's been great. I love mm. uh, I love our conversations. It's really yeah, it's fun. really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anything exciting happening this um, this <gasps> week? I had my pedal to the metal last week with some things going on. Um, so this week I'm actually very pleased that it's just um, a little bit more routine for me. So, but yes, like, like we said at the very beginning, just um, my focus will now be mapping out kind of 2022 and um, yeah, yeah, different kind of launchings and that kind of thing so so starting to focus on that but for for this week in and of itself it's it's business as usual which is which is really nice <laughs> yeah yeah that's so good mm. um as i was saying before we jumped on i'm um finishing up as soon as we get off here i'm going up to sydney actually and visiting my mum and um and then i'm going to see my daughter we're going to have dinner together my myself my daughter and um her husband my son-in-law and um and tomorrow i'm so i'm sleeping overnight and tomorrow i'm um being a massage therapist for 20 odd years i've got mm. a friend that's just gone through um, a massage diploma and so i'm paying it forward i said now i want to teach you all the stuff that they don't teach you in your diploma what? Oh. So, um, so tomorrow she's going to give me a massage as, you know, like as a thank you or whatever. But um, we've got someone else as the, as the body and um, I'm going to teach her some trips, tricks and tips of 20 odd years of massaging. Uh, what I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At one stage, actually, um, I was going to... Um, you know, when I was still massaging, I thought, wouldn't it be great to actually do a course yeah. on all of those little intricacies of being a, you know, a good therapist? Because there's yes. a lot of stuff that you don't learn. Um, you learn a lot of basic stuff in diplomas and stuff, but there's mm. all this other stuff that you just mm. um, learn as you go along. So, mm. and I thought, oh, I might do that as a course. But then I had to be part of the system and do the whole accreditation thing and it was just like nah yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we don't like structures <laughs> that one doesn't work for me no that, that way yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 like, i feel you a room full of people i'll teach them but um yeah. i've got to start ticking boxes and signing paperwork then mm. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, Helen's just said you should record your session. And I agree. Great idea. <laughs> you should record it. That's a yeah. great idea, yeah. actually, Helen. Yeah. I'll see if they're um if they're willing to do that and we can put it up. Yeah. That would be amazing because honestly, like I would I would love to see that and learn, you know, you know, vicariously. Yeah, um yeah. but um yeah, I think yeah, what a beautiful opportunity for your friend and um if if she is Willing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, yeah. Well, enjoy, that your, like um, enjoy your week. Mm, and yes, um, thank you. And we will um, enjoy your week, everyone that's watching as well. And if you're watching the replay, please put hashtag replay and join in in the conversation because mm -hmm. we do love um, looking at what's coming up. Um, Love spiritual bites. Wish you both a beautiful week. Oh, I'm going to put that up on the thing. I love, I love that you love spiritual bites. I'm assuming that that's Renee again. Um, and Helen, you're always, um, you're always one of our um, groupies. I love, <laughs> I love having Helen on. Uh, she's Me always too. got little bits of information and insight as well. So. Um, lovely to have everyone here and, and on. So um, enjoy your week, everyone. And um, I'm sure that Nicolette will be back next week and we'll have another interesting conversation about something, whatever we're <laughs> going to talk about. <laughs> Take care, Asha. Lovely. Yeah, to thank you. Well. You too. You too. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Bye all. Have a great week. <laughs>